to everyone tuning into another day with Jesus morning after morning to hear the voice of our Lord over our life relationships situations and promises may this word bless your heart and bring understanding to your spirit so that you may soar in every area of your life good morning and greetings in Jesus name welcome to this beautiful new day and welcome to this beautiful new opportunity to walk with the Lord and to represent Him here on the earth. Everything that we say and we do, we are echoing the heart of God or we are actually giving a bad reputation to the name of Jesus here on the earth. As believers, as Christians, we have to remember that when people see us, they have to see Jesus in and through our actions. That's why scripture says in Philippians 2 verse 5, let this attitude be in you, the same that Jesus himself had. What was the attitude that Jesus had? What was the heart that Jesus carried when he walked here on the earth? If you read the verse that is previous to that verse, you get a brief understanding of how Jesus lived here on the earth. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. The Bible says, Let each of you Look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Sometimes as we live here on the earth, we are so occupied with what we want to do and what we require and what we need. And because we are so self-obsessed, we are hardly looking at what other people around me need. We are not praying for them. We are not interceding for them. We are not helping them. Instead, every relationship that we engage in, it is almost all of them trying to gain some kind of benefit for your own self. And that's why this instruction comes from Apostle Paul. He says, see, this is how Jesus lived here on the earth. He didn't live in a manner that tells everybody that everybody has to serve him. He came to live and serve and help and bless others. And that's why, let each of you look not only to his own interests. Sometimes your interests or the things that you're praying for, the things that you require may be emergencies or may be important, may be things that actually are very challenging. And yet, when we are so obsessed with our things, we are unable to look at the interests or the needs or the requirements of the people around us. See, Jesus, when he was on the earth, there were days when he would be extremely tired. There'd be days when he would be totally drained out. And yet, he didn't stop children from coming to him. He didn't stop people from coming and receiving from him, even in night hours. He didn't stop anybody that wanted to come and taste of the goodness of the Lord through his life. And sometimes, I believe that we are not imitating Jesus in the same manner because we are trying to prioritize our space and ourselves and our own you know, communities and our church and our business over the people that God has entrusted us to. Who are the people that God wants you to serve today? I want you to take some time to deprioritize your needs and prioritize their needs. I say this often how Jesus, when he was on the cross, even though he was in the most, the craziest of pain, there were people that were calling him names, people that were accusing him. He was emotionally distraught. He was spiritually disconnected from his father. Physically, he was in tremendous amount of pain. At that point, he looked at his neighbors and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. At that point, his focus is on Mary and he says, Mary, here is uh, your son and looks at John and says, here is your mother. At that point, he's looking at people who are hurting him and he's praying for them to the father saying, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. How could it be that Jesus, even in the moments of so much personal pain, he was able to look past himself and focus on someone else's need, someone else's pain, someone else's problem. For the thief, it was a spiritual problem. For the mother and the son, it was a physical problem. 
for the community that was hurting him it was a curse that they were bringing upon themselves and and Jesus stands in the gap and he prays for them all of this at the most crucial critical point of Jesus's life when he was fulfilling God's purpose for himself instead of expecting uh, compassion and help from people even in that point he was concerned about others needs others requirements others interests what would it be like if each of us we would live out this same principle in our families in our marriages in our churches in our relationships that we are not all about ourselves see even in a conversation it's very obvious what you're trying to get if your conversation with your friend it's all about what you want and what you require instead of trying to serve the other person instead of trying to see what is it that they need how can i serve them how can i help them then we are constantly uh, you know going away from the purposes of god for our life instead we can come back and say lord my needs you know my needs you are my father and you know that i need these things and you will take care of my needs so i i don't care about my needs and i don't care about what i will wear and where i will work and what i will do with my life because i have a heavenly father that cares for me but you've placed me here on the earth to take care of your children and to feed them and to serve them and to love them on your behalf those that don't have a revelation of who you are you've placed me in their life to be your representative if you could pray this prayer and live the rest of the day with that assurance that when you speak god is speaking through you when you open your heart to somebody the heart of jesus is open to them through your life if you would do that if each of us would do that can you imagine how much of jesus will be manifested in our communities wherever god has placed us even in our workplaces and even at our homes may the lord give us grace to actually obey this scripture let each of you look not only to his own interests but also to the interests of others father we thank you for this morning's word we thank you for this is not just a suggestion but an instruction from the lord and we pray that you would give us the grace to actually obey it in the way that you want us to the lord give us the understanding and the discernment to say and do the right thing at every opportunity that comes before us today in jesus name we pray amen thank you for listening hope today's word will encourage you and build you for the day ahead god bless you and shalom